Thirteen years ago, I bought this land, which was very heavily wooded. I cleared it on weekends. I built this house from the foundation right up to the roof. It was a challenge, a challenge that I, uh, I enjoyed very much. I don't think it'll ever be finished. I'm constantly changing it. I derived quite a bit of satisfaction out of it and a great deal of pride. I did all the masonry work, carpentry work, plumbing, heating, stone work, and so forth. I'm not a carpenter by trade. I'm not a stone fitter by trade. I'm a tugboat captain by trade. I'm a tugboat captain in New York Harbor. New York Harbor. Day and night, powerful tugboats ply these waters on a variety of tasks. Dispatched by radio from the top of this skyscraper, Captain Grover Sanchegrin pilots the Teresa Moran. Uh, Teresa, 17. 17. Yeah, we're all finished. All right, uh, Grover, you want to head down this way, uh, shift at 23rd Street? Head down, right. Shifting at 23rd Street, more Mark Kelman and Arrows, right up. The captain and his crew board the Teresa at 5 a.m. Their usual working area is New York Harbor, a vast complex of ports and piers covering 1,500 square miles. Deep in the hull of the Teresa, high-powered engines under the control of the chief engineer develop 4,000 horsepower, enough to move a ship of any size. We have everything from a small 3,000-ton coastwise vessel to super tankers up to 80,000 tons. Whether in the busy ports of the Great Lakes or in other deep-sea ports like New York, the work of tugboat crews varies considerably from day to day. Not only do tugs dock and undock ships of all kinds, they also tow engineless vessels, power floats, oil barges, garbage scows, derricks, and railroad car barges. Unusual assignments crop up frequently. Here the Teresa is pushing a floating derrick to the spot where during the night, a German freighter dropped her anchor and chain to the bottom of the river. With a tight schedule to meet, the captain of the Atlantic Cinderella ordered the chain severed when the winch became stuck. A hard decision, but in the long run it saves time and money. Yeah, we got it. The tugboat crew watches the three-hour operation. I wouldn't want to eat it. No. I'm going to get it in <laughs> After the derrick has retrieved the anchor and its massive chain, the tugboat crew takes over, and it's time for the derrick crew to relax. The Teresa, with Captain Grover at the helm, pulls the derrick float to the pier to return the anchor and chain to the Atlantic Cinderella. This ship is being unloaded, reloaded, and refueled all at the same time. When a great white ocean liner is to be docked, the two deckhands throw a white tarpaulin over the tug's bow to protect the side of the ship. North and right here. I can't back. His experience in the harbor itself that counts. I'm knowledgeable of all the currents, the effects of the currents, the location of each pier. And while most liners could, if necessary, dock themselves, 
They cannot do it as safely and swiftly as the tugs can. Two tugboats can nudge a liner into a berth in 40 minutes. Weather conditions pose no insurmountable problems for the tugs. They can dock ships at night, in fog, and even in hurricanes. On days like this, the docking goes very smoothly. The activity of tugboats is not limited to New York Harbor. Here the Teresa and her sister tug are going far up the Hudson River to dock a British freighter loaded with gypsum, the basic ingredient of plaster. You will get up there? Not yet, no. All right. We've got an hour. You eat? Yeah. Good lamp. Captain Grover is on board 48 hours and then off at home 48 hours. He and his crew have comfortable air-conditioned cabins for off-duty spells. He can also descend to the galley two decks below and back through the engine room for meals and coffee. Like Captain Grover, most tugboat captains are also docking pilots. When we go alongside of a vessel to dock her, I go on a bridge of the ship and direct all maneuvers from the ship. Hey, go ahead. Hey, Barney, uh, you can work way out. Work both sides of that stern for me. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Okay. North and two south or what? Yeah, north and south is good. When I first started in this business, I was one of the youngest docking pilots in New York Harbor. In those days, unless you had a beard and gray hair, the ship captains would look at you and sort of wonder if you were capable of doing the job. Steady. 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 Good passage. Good, very good until yesterday morning. I lost, well, I lost the tide here. I lost time in the Cape Cod Canal. There was a ship, two ships coming through there. Otherwise, okay. Yeah, smooth sailing. Captain Grover directs the two tugs by radio. I need Julia ahead easy the end. The tugs uh, toot back their answers. I'm also knowledgeable about each tugboat that's assisting the vessel. I know the capability of each tug, and I know the capability of the men handling the vessel in charge of the tug, so that I know where to position them and how to use them at fullest advantage. Hard right. Docking pilots must know not only how a big ship and the tugboats operate, but must be able to balance the effects of all three ships involved. An intricate maneuver that requires a delicate sense of timing and movement. Overshooting the mark, even by a little, could destroy the pier, especially a flimsy one like this, or seriously damage the ship. Dawn. Saturday, when several big liners come in, is perhaps the busiest day. Okay, Grover. Sorry to get you out of bed, but we've got the Oceanic docking north at 90, 7 o'clock. She's on her way up. That was an arrow 20 minutes ago. Right up. Right. Now I'll go put my shirt on. Right up. 
the liner Oceanic. Captain Grover, in more formal dress, boards the luxury liner to direct the docking operations. Figure it'll catch you when she's halfway around. Fourth uh, quarter, after she's halfway around. Very good. Very good. Okay, thank you. As the tugs in the liner plow their way upriver, Grover meets with Giovanni Ruffini, the Oceanic's captain, and an old friend. Captain Ruffini calls at many of the world's great ports, but has no special knowledge about New York Harbor. Captain Grover, on the other hand, has been working this harbor for 30 years. The docking maneuvers by two-way radio have begun. In the old days, the docking pilots used to shout their instructions through handheld megaphones. One more docking accomplished, and as many as 10 more may await the Teresa today. She and the other tugs crisscross the harbor continuously to dock and undock some 20,000 ships a year. It may seem that each job is the same, but the ships are not all the same in size or maneuverability, and tugboat crews must also reckon with such variables as wind, current, tides, and channels. It's a challenging job, for the deckhands and mates, as well as the captain. Honey, Elizabeth, you can get a starboard quarter. Three quarter right up. Perhaps half a million passengers sail yearly on these queens of the sea. But except for a handful of well wishers, most New Yorkers pay little attention to the diversity of activities in their harbor. But for Captain Grover, it's a way of life. You're your own boss, really. There's no one standing over your shoulder to tell you how you ought to do a job. There's a variety and constantly changing scene, open air. I enjoy the work very much. 